Welcome to Brox and Max. Like and subscribe. Here's your host for today. Got some more boring crap for you. Going to be working on a GMC. Not a Mac, not a Brockway. Or a cat? A GMC? I guess you're just going to have to tune in and watch. See what this GMC is all about. Not sure if anybody thought GMC, what could it be? A pickup truck, a cab over, a midsize truck, a GMC General, Brigadier, anything? Nope. This is a American LaFrance GMC. What was once a fire truck. I just tore the body off, which was about nothing that went in the scrap bin. But there's some good odds and ends on this. You got the front hubs that are in decent shape and the curvature for the fender both sides for the front is salvageable got some springs front axle motor mounts and the frames good sometimes these trucks these fire trucks from the 20s they have the body on the back, whether it housed water or a chemical tank or whatever they were doing with the fire truck, they, they rot the top of the frames off. A lot of it is because of the paint prep. I don't think they ever used primer way back then. Just blast on some paint quick and send it down the road. So you can see just remnants a little bit here and there. And then you see some red paint on the inner frame there. But the whole point of this video is I wasn't even going to post anything, but I quick grabbed my camera because I thought maybe somebody would find it educational for this older crap. But I have a guy, he needs the rear end for a project that he's working on. So other than me having to cut the U-bolts and get that up out of here, because once upon a time I had an engine, I had a transmission, I think I still have the transmission, but the engine was, I believe, a inline six Buick engine, and somebody took that off my hands also. But I just can't describe to you how bad this truck really is. I, it's a shame to see fire departments or districts or boroughs or whatever have these really old fire trucks and they just have either no way to keep them maintained and they decide that they just want to put them up for auction and probably in this particular case this truck probably sold 50 years ago to somebody and they just let it sit and rot in a field and I was lucky enough to get my hands on it before it went to scrap and my thought was it's very similar to Brockway stuff early stuff like this but the rear end Somebody obviously needs it more than me. It's got some pretty unique Dayton style cast hubs on it. Now, the only thing about Dayton wheel way back in the day is you have these wedges here, similar to Dayton, but the problem is it's not just the wedges that need to come off. You have a snap ring that the wedge is holding in there it's holding this wheel on almost like a wedge and it'll somehow aligns i'm sure you have to align it just like a dayton wheel would so the plan of attack here is to see i'm sure these tires are original so i'm sure these lug nuts have never come off before and a hundred years that this truck has existed so I'm curious to see I'm gonna get my impact out and see if I can possibly break those nuts and wedges loose and then attempt to get the snap ring out in one piece so that's the game plan oh wow okay that was easy
actually quite surprised at this. So five out of the six broke loose pretty easily, actually. They're a seven eighths outside nut with probably a seven sixteenths thread. So they're not overly big, but this one is a problem. It's only about a half moon, so I'm gonna to attempt to get a chisel, and maybe I can chisel that half of a nut right off of there and try to get this wheel off. So let's see what happens when I do this with the hammer. Yep, see, these the wedges, they're not like a regular Dayton style wheel. It's the same concept, but they were still trying to figure that stuff out back when. So I'll see what I can do with that one right there. Now there are a few methods to the madness here, but I'm going to try the quickest and simplest way, which is using a very sharp chisel. I'm going to attempt with either this one or this one to see if I can break this nut in half because metal back in the 20s wasn't that hard. It was a pretty soft nuts and bolts, probably grade two back in the day. I don't think they were quite figuring out what to do with about that. So before I go and get the torch and just cut it off of there or take the grinder and buzz it off, I'm just curious how stuck it actually is. So you can see that's turning, but my attempt is to try to get this wadded up part broke free so it can just come apart in one piece, but it also just, I don't have to spin it all the way up out to get it all the way off. So. Or I guess it just wants to spin freely all the way out. Never would have thought a hundred year old nut would want to come off that easy, especially being half rotted. Here you go. I'll probably fast forward it, but this is about five minutes of my time that I'll never get back. But this was with no penetrating oil or anything. And as rusty as this was, this came right out. I'm quite surprised because normally this thing is getting cut off or sheared right off. But the other thing is these are actual bolts on the back side of this is a carriage bolt, I think. It's a rounded head on the back, square drive on the back side. So if I had to, this can be replaced. So now that I have all the nuts loose and all the wedges loose, I'll attempt to break loose this snap ring. You see that right there, it just drove right out of there, so that's no big deal. So there you go relatively painless to do that. Now I'll jack it up or I'll use my forklift and pick this wheel up and I don't think it's going to come out as 
easy as just removing it but now that this wedge ring is out of there it has no choice but to come off Well, when all else fails, get a bigger purse. So as you can see, now that the wheel is off, it's a very early concept of a Dayton style hub. And the same concept with the rim it's a Dayton style but it has this wedge built into the rim that that wedge ring holds everything in place it actually has dual one on the back side that you can actually use it on the other side if you wanted to not sure why because I'm sure once if everything was all nice and greased up and not rusty they could still dismount this on the truck without even having to remove the rim they just take this snap ring off like a regular tube type rim change it out if they had to so that's basically a little education on this style they were still trying to figure that stuff out back in the day so i have the other side to remove and then I'll put this somewhere in case I need parts or whatever it's still a valuable piece cross members and frame rail like I said there's some things on it that are well worth saving they just don't make this stuff anymore so hope you learned something check out some other stuff if you have the time and as always thanks for watching and like and subscribe.